Hey what's going on guys my name's Rav and today we finally got a new opening for the Pokemon Journeys anime. A ton of content was revealed and this may be the best opening yet. There's a bunch of information to cover so let's jump straight into it. Don't forget to leave this video a like to show your support and I'll be sure to bring out my next video shortly. Make sure to subscribe if you aren't ready to keep up to date and without further ado let's begin. Before we analyse what was shown let's talk about the build up to this opening alongside new information revealed during the week. The Pokemon Presents that aired last Sunday revealed the new Generation 9 games Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. These games will be based on Spain and they will be released late 2022. These games have been confirmed to be open world. Does this mean that Ash's journey will continue into Generation 9? Well despite making a theory about this already, stay tuned for a new video focusing on the potential outcome. It was also revealed that a new anime series focusing on the Pokemon Legends Arceus game will air in the summer of 2022. The latest issue of Telebikun was also revealed, showcasing new frames from episode 102. We got full confirmation that this raid battle will be focusing on Articuno, completing the Kanto Legendary Bird raid battles. The scans show a general recap about Go's goal wishing to catch Mew, and how the Project Mew trial missions fall in correlation. The newer scans confirm that Gary and Tokyo will be returning, possibly implying that Tokyo is the fifth chaser. We then learn that Tokyo's Chikorita evolved into a Bayleaf, and he has a Gardevoir and also a female Indeedee. Gary's Umbreon and Arcanine have been confirmed to return, alongside a new addition being a Tyranitar. Go uses his Boldor, Cinderace and Darmanitan, whilst Ash uses Lucario, Pikachu and Surfetch. Translations also state that the battle will take place in the Seafoam Islands, the location Articuno can be found in the games. We also see information about the Pokemon that can be super effective against the legendary bird. Will Go catch this legendary Pokemon? A frame from Pokefan was also shown revealing Pokemon used in a specific frame of the battle. This raid seems to be very intense, especially seeing as it's going to take numerous Pokemon to take down Articuno. I'm really looking forward to seeing it, and we may even see Gary and Tokyo Mega evolve their Pokemon, if they have access to it of course. We then got the summary for episode 101, airing on the 11th of March, titled The Thwacky With One Stick. The summary states the following. Ash and Go arrive in the wild area of Galar and meet a Thwacky. Go's Grookey has an interest in its evolved form. However, the Thwacky seems to only have one stick when it should have been two. What would Ash, Go and Grookey do in such of a reasoned Thwacky? It seems Grookey will be getting some development in this episode, especially in relation to the interview with Go's voice actor. I don't think it will evolve, but only time will tell. Now let's explore the new opening revealed, alongside analysing all of the details shown. Before I begin, the details I'll be discussing are in no particular order. This is just pure speculation. Firstly, this is the fourth version of the 123 after the rain song. Patch Magazine August 2020 issue confirmed that the opening visuals would change over time, but the song itself wouldn't. The first opening was performed by After the Rain, a duo consisting of Saruru and Marafumra, which aired from episode 1 to episode 31. Opening 2 commenced from episode 32 to episode 49, and it was performed by Nishiwaru-kun and Kirishio. For opening 3, this episode commenced from episode 50 to episode 99, performed by the Karach sisters. And here we are today, with opening 4 that has commenced from episode 100, performed by Ash Ketchum's Japanese voice actor Rika Matsumoto and Go's Japanese voice actor Daiki Yamashita. On the day the Anipoke PR Twitter account announced a new opening was coming, they also stated that they will reveal original animation pictures until Friday the 4th of March. During this time, we saw various Gengar sketch drawings each day in various frames. Let's now take a look at the new opening. The opening begins with us seeing the characters from the show before panning to show Ash and Go staring afar. This frame is a reference to the very first opening, showing the continuous adventure and development from the beginning of the series, a simple message defining from start to end. We then see a frame of when Ash first obtained Pikachu back in the very first episode of the Pokemon anime, alongside Professor Oak. Go is then shown when he was younger, encountering Mew back in the first episode of Pokemon Journeys. The duo leave the Sakuragi lab before saying bye to Chloe as they embark on their adventures, alongside seeing a nice frame of the duo adventure across the regions. The next series of frames showcases Go's Pokemon in the park, alongside selective frames showing the Pokemon in their respective collective from their region. Kanto Pokemon are shown in the Sakuragi Park, Johto Pokemon are shown in the area of Go Mech Tokyo by the tree, Hoenn Pokemon are met in Lunko City, alongside showing a reference to the first advanced generation ending in Japan. In Sinnoh, we see beloved Dawn return, possibly implying that she will return again in the series, alongside Ghost Sinnoh Pokemon by Snowpoint City's port. Dawn is shown in her platinum outfit. The Colossus Ruins is shown alongside Go and his Unova Pokemon, whilst his Kalos Pokemon are shown in a forest area. Kukui's home houses the scene for the Alola Pokemon, and we return to Galar's Winden City in where Go met School Bunny, showing his Pokemon from that region. Go's Pokemon can be seen across all eight of the regions. We then see a nice shot of Go with his Galar starters aiming to acquire Mew. This then transitions to us seeing Ash with his Mega Glove, Z Power Ring, and Dynamax Band, forming the Trinity Power mechanic 
that he'll be using alongside his Pokemon against Leon. We get a nice reference to Ash throwing a Pokeball, just like he did back in the original series. It seems maybe his journey team will be the one to be used in this climactic battle, but I'll elaborate more on that in a new video soon. The next set of frames showcase the mechanics in use, such as Gigantamax Gengar, Mega Lucario, and Pikachu using 10 million volt Thunderbolt. Go is then shown alongside Tsurugi and Asahi, as he meets all of the legendary titans, confirming the reveal of Regilecki, Regidraco, and Regigigas. This is most likely going to be the next big challenge in the Project Mew trial missions, especially seeing as we know that Tsurugi and Asahi have already encountered a few of the Regis. This then transitions to us seeing Ash encounter Leon on Gigantamax Charizard, before showing a clear parallel of both the girls of each protagonist. We then see Chloe and Eevee in a very special attire, and if you notice carefully, the dance routine is almost the same step sequence as to Serena. Looking closely, the attire seems to be a combination of May's Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire and Serena's Kalos attire, matching the hairpin that Serena's Eevee wore. Does this mean that Serena and May may return in the future of the series to possibly comply with the Wallace Cup? All of the evolutions are shown, confirming that Chloe will soon encounter Sylveon, and who knows if the Pokemon belongs to Serena. I reckon this is the case. Team Rocket are shown before we get confirmation of the return of Gary and his Pokemon. The Alola Gang are then seen, confirming the return of Lily and Gladion, possibly implying that they found their father Mon along their journey. The known frame of Wallace and Lysia is shown, alongside the return of Iris, Marnie, Pierce, and then the known frame of the XY companions Bonnie and Clemon. Eruption occurs as then we see that Paul is returning in the series after almost 12 years since his last appearance in the Pokemon anime. The Anipoke PR Twitter account stated for us to stay tuned to see how he plays a part in the future of this series. Maybe Ash will take him on in the PWC, or maybe he's part of Project Mew. Tokyo is then shown to return with his Chikorita evolved into a Bayleaf, and his other Pokemon known to be a guard of war. And then it happened. We got full confirmation that Ash's Greninja will be returning in the series after almost six years. This is the biggest news yet, and it hasn't been confirmed if he will join Ash's team again, but I am so happy to know that he's returning. The Anipoke PR Twitter account has informed us to look forward to his return, and Koga has finally come back to me. A nice clash between Gigantamax Charizard and Mega Lucario is shown, before we see our dual protagonists accompanied by their partner Pokemon. The opening concludes with us seeing Ash and Go with their Pokemon, as they head on forward for their adventure. My goodness, what an opening this was. There are so many elements to consider now that we have the confirmation of returns and event story plots. It seems now that all of the events for this series have been fully confirmed, and I can't wait to see how it all plans out for the anime. Of course, we still don't know if this is Ash's final series, but from the looks of things, it does raise questions. Further details from today's episode confirm the return of Flynn, and also the mention of Hop, so we could be expecting Leon's brother to debut soon. The build up to this opening with the Gengar shots have been incredible, and I can't wait to see how all of these events unfold. The opening was all about adventure, and the message behind it is about the development of the journey both of our protagonists have been on. It was perfect, and apparently, it is said that the opening may change every week to show different elements. But we shall wait and see. But why not let me know what you guys think about the opening in the comment section down below. If you guys would like to interact with me, then be sure to follow me on Twitter, and join the Team PokerF Discord server to discuss all things Pokemon. You can find the rest of my social networks on the screen, and in the description below. If you enjoyed the video, then be sure to leave it a like, as your support is greatly appreciated. Don't forget to share the video with your friends. Finally, make sure to subscribe to keep up to date with my videos, and click on the little bell to enable notifications, so you guys get notified when I upload a new video. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and be sure to stick around for more Pokemon content. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.